my attention because I'm a baker and, uh, and I'm a, I was a trustee of the library at the time. So um, it comes from, was crafted around the Cal California dinner table of Judith Holmberg and her book art friends in 1999. They sought to honor French gastronome um, Jean Anthelme Brilliant Savarin. And the only time I've ever heard his name was in the Iron Chef show on television, and they would always quote him. But he was um, um, he was born and he wrote a book, uh, a famous book about a food. Um, and his birthday is April 1st, April Fool's Day. So they try to hold this event around April 1st. Um, and it's held across the country. It's an international event uh, everywhere. So we always hope have our little event, and we, we get amazing things. And I want to just say, John Riley and Janet Molding, wherever she is, Janet is, <laughs> Janet is the uh, director of a Forbes Library, and John owns a bookstore on Market Street. And I must say, they've always been here. And I, can, I admire them. Janet would always say, I can't bake. But, um, it, but she, uh, she rides horses, she's always ridden horses, and so she often has a horse thing. But she bakes great things, <laughs> and she's a vegan too. And John, he's just really creative all the time. So I just, they've entered pretty much every year, so I really appreciate them and admire them. I just want to say that, because this might be my last year, Dee. You're gonna have to find somebody else. And Nate, and Nate has helped us too with our graphics and uh, and different things. Nate Jasper, because he's a graphic designer, so oh, I don't want to leave him The logo is here too for getting credit. And, yeah. I thought you did the logo. Oh, Scott. Scott. Please, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, our, our judges today are Elisa Klein. She's the Ward uh, 7, my Ward uh, counselor. And um, Michael, uh, Willers. Willers, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say Jordan. Some Jonah. dude who wandered it off the street. No. I really expected to know me. Okay. His son, uh, Jonah, entered a lot of, of, the, of edible books in the past. And I just learned you are, what's your profession? A uh, book judger. Yeah, a book judger. <laughs> <laughs> a pediatric cardiologist. A pediatric cardiologist. And a sometime wise guy. Yeah, and he's very enthusiastic, Elisa told me. So it's really good. Good combination. So we're going to go around and order, and hopefully the people are here, and they'll talk about their uh, creation, and then the judges will give them their award. And we're very happy to have you all here. Thank you. And, and Bonnie, there's a monetary award, right? There's like a thousand bucks to sell <laughs> for the right? judges. <laughs> for the judges. That's right. This is Jacob, and this is Frederick Alex, and they both love Asterix. Um, but when we decided to do the edible book, Jacob was very clear he wanted to do Asterix and the Laurel Leaf. This is Asterix, this is his friend Obelix, and our initial plan was to make both an asterisk of sandwiches and an obelisk of graham crackers, but it's very hard to transport an obelisk. So, <laughs> um, so this is our tribute to Asterix and the Laurel Leaf, which consists of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches, which are Jacob's favorite. And uh, laurel leaf of grapes and salad greens. So this, we thought this was a really fantastic. Let's go, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just Thanks, Elizabeth. Can you guys hear me? Okay, are we doing, yes. doing all right here. So we thought this was a really fantastic creation, and uh, we gave it a couple of different awards. One was where Roman myth meets comics meets sandwich. Yes. We also thought it was the most asterisky. <laughs> and, and I have to say, really a great compromise that you were able to like sort of let go of the obelix bit. I didn't realize that was part of it. But also uh, the literar literary, literal literary Latin literature award on a really cool plate. I thought the plate was really a cool part of it because it's like something that one of the boys did at some point, I'm guessing, right? So. Anyway, we really thought it was a fantastic uh, creation. Great job, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. You guys kicked it off, huh? That's awesome. So people here. Fairy Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So I know this is a family event, but we gave this um, the most 
stoned and baked Harry Potter award. <laughs> Yeah. It's Northampton. We can say these things. It's all right. We also said it was the punniest. <laughs> because the judges can be punny, too. Sometimes. Right. This is a really cool uh, sort of uh, rice uh, recreation of the uh, cover. Oh, hi. No, I'm not Alicia. Oh, but I talk, can talk for her. I, That's I, I talked to Alicia about this, and it. she said that she has in her kitchen now lots and lots and lots and lots of cooked rice because she had to try <laughs> so many different variations, and that it's incredibly difficult to work with, and she will never touch rice again. <laughs> she went through five pairs of tweezers. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we gave this the most unique medium for a for recreation. It really is is, is quite uh, phenomenal, and the most fragile award. And I gotta tell you, I didn't want to touch it, move it, look at it, breathe on it. I really was really worried just standing next to it that some sort of gravitational field would move them out of place. But it's really quite a, like a sneeze. It's a sneeze. It's really quite a, a delicate, uh, a delicate, fine thing. So um, I have to say, each one is glue. Oh, is that true? No. 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 It is kind of brilliant because cool if you look at the woodcut here, you see these actually do look like grains of rice. Yeah. So it's it's really a brilliant recreation. Yeah. So, this, this, do you is, want oh, to say this is Catcher in the Pie, um, <laughs> after Catcher in the Rye. Uh, Rowan's, Con was Rowan's idea. Um, and he's the baker, so we have a delicious apple pie here that I've been waiting to try. Um, the, the catcher's mitt is lady fingers dipped in uh, molasses, and the baseball is a frosted Oreo. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. No? No? It's nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the word we gave this one is And we said it's angst made into pie. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'll, I'll add to that, if you don't mind. I think it's really, I mean, I love the book. I think the book is fantastic, but I think it's really hard to make something lighthearted and delicious. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you for doing that. It's really, it's it, was, it was really well done. Thank you. Excellent. All right, well, here we are with Firefly July. Guys, we have enough slack there. How are we doing? That's it. Watch your foot. Watch your foot in there, guys. All right. My mother wrote poetry when I was in West Hampton Library a couple weeks ago. I looked up her name, and there weren't any books that were totally by you. But this book came up because she has a poem in here, and it's across on a double page spread with Carl Sandburg. I thought classy. To be, um, so, I, and then I just sort of. Initially, I didn't think of it as an edible book thing, but then it hit me if I could come up with rhyming food. My first idea was ham and jam and lamb. Um, oh. <laughs> but then the jam I had to sort of gross, and the ham, I decided that since I'm sort of a lapsing vegetarian, I would try to steer away from ham and lamb. So then I just brainstormed and asked some friends for other poems based on food. And I won't tell you what any of them are, but you can try to guess if you haven't told anyone. The answers are underneath. Like just for example, this is yellow jello. Um, yeah, it was just it was just fun trying to go to candy stores and, and think of think of rhymes. So try to I uh, like the idea of making it interactive. So if you haven't, try to guess what the what the things are. They're all, they're all short poems, not necessarily just two words. But each one embodies a poem. Awesome. All right. Anyway, the poems aren't in the book. These are my own poems. <laughs> Thank you, Dee. So we gave uh, this uh, several several sort of different little awards. One was most conceptual. The other was the most likely to break our will while trying to crack the code. And, and, and the final and perhaps the, uh, the, sh the shortest one was best jest. We're all down with bag of chips. <laughs> Excellent, thanks, Dee. All right, so now, now we're, uh, we're on the fractals. 
Excellent. Okay. Um, this year, I was really caught by surprise by this little broccoli. I think I was at uh, Valley uh, River Market. And if you've ever seen one of these things, it will just blow your mind. Look at this. Check that out. I can't believe that. So I said, that's my show. That's all, all I have to do is bring a <laughs> And I'm done. I said, I don't have to do work, make anything, stuff. But then I started finding other fractals, like a red cabbage. When you cut it in half, you get this beautiful pattern. And my wife, Patty, came up with um, <clears throat> snowflakes made out of sugar cookies. And snowflakes are also fractals. Now, fractals are repeating. Um, I was told exactly. Self-repeating. Self-repeating. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. It's, it's, it's uh, an expression of a, of a mathematical formula where something starts out and, and repeats itself larger, 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 or smaller, and smaller, and smaller. So these are examples of fractals. And I have to tell this story, how hard it was to find these. They were out of season. I have a sister in California. I called her in California. She shipped them to me UPS two days ago. That's why they look a little worn out. What are they called? Broccoli Romanesco. Had we known that, we would have given you a different award, I think. <laughs> like most laborious. It was most more laborious than I thought it was going to be. Travel. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was like going to be easy. Okay, so what we said was most intellectual, <laughs> most psychedelic and mind blowing, <laughs> most intellectually humbling. Um, and I was wondering if any of these are fractals also, do, does that refer to Fibonacci number things Related, as well? But not the same. Because this, that thing that's being passed around looks like it's a Fibonacci yeah. pattern to me. So um, most Fibonacci, They are related. Yes. They are related. Yes. Like cousins, like mathematical cousins. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both mathematical shapes that are commonly found in nature. But different categories entirely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Here we are with the gas from Tiny. Tell us. Thank you. I did the gas from Tiny's, and it's an alphabet book with a little bit of a morbid twist. Um, so I used gingerbread children to illustrate each of the letters of the alphabet. Oh yeah, that's a great okay. idea. Um, so some of my favorites. Oh, do you know them by heart? Of course. Why would I ask? Well, after doing it, it all, it kind well, of that was a good look, by the way. I just got a really good look. <laughs> right, um, so C is for Clara, who wasted away. Uh, D is for Desmond, who fell, uh, thrown out of the sleigh. Uh, so Kate, who was struck with an axe, and Ellis for Leo, who swallowed some tacks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So this was really uh, fantastic. It took me a, a long time to sort of sit and, and look at these and examine every single one. And I'll tell you, my favorite, I think, is probably, if I had to choose one way to go, I think it would be Z is for Zilla who drank too much gin. I think that's <laughs> what sounds better than maybe like swallowing tax. But uh, and so we gave this a, a number of, a couple of different awards. One is really fine use of fine detail. I don't know how long it took you to Take a little whatever you call them and draw them on there, but that was really something else. Um, and we also gave it the, how can something so gruesome and ghastly be so gastronomically good award? <laughs> it, you know, one would think I would have lost my appetite reading the poem, but in fact, I really was just hungry by the time I got to the end, as long as I was reading it this way. So, anyway. so thank you. It was really fantastic creation. I also noticed that kids were really drawn, and I could see they almost like were so close to picking them up. Most enticing. Most enticing. All right. Excellent. So now we're uh, at Goodnight Moon. Is Goodnight Moon's creator here? Yes. Yeah. Or is there a representative, or anyone who would like to pretend they're a representative? Or somebody who wants to pretend that they made this? Okay, do you Barbara came early and helped set up tables and do some other tasks, which was really, really nice. But she had a particular a play that she had to give in the afternoon. Um, what did she say? Uh, I can't remember. That's all right. We'll, 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 ext we'll extemporize. We have plenty of things to say about it. Well, we were really struck by the level of detail in this one, just a remarkable recreation. And we gave it two awards, the I Can Live In There Award. 
and most likely to make me ask, should I eat this award? Oh, no. <laughs> No. Oh no, that's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, <this is> not... <laughs> pretend, pretend like you did not hear that. I'm gonna flashy thing you. Yeah. For those of you who've seen Men in Black. I, I think it was the I'm gonna feel really guilty eating that little bunny award, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Excuse me, quick sex, sorry. Should look at the back. Should actually take the sections together with fruit letter tape. And, and there is matzah, so it's really a kosher for Passover. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's just in time, really. Right. Beautiful. All right, so uh, here we are now to the uh, scatological uh, portion of our show. Yeah. <laughs> With my on this. I guess it's not really scatological, it's more like urinological. Or... <laughs> well, anyone has ever had a cat or has a cat, they will understand completely. Um, it's just, it's a book of poems written by cats, such as they have things like, you know, I'm touching you, I'm touching you, I'm touching you. Oh, you're awake, good for me. And this one was the very first poem, and it's how you're ignoring the cat, or you're leaving the cat, so the cat's gonna pee on everything you want. So the cat is cake, that is just lemonade. Oh. <laughs> so, I have heard that before. I want to let you know that has been said before. Oh, sorry, no, you go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I'm done. Got it? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I've, I've been uh, participated in this um, time, several times, and, uh, but I haven't been here in years, and every time I do get to come, I'm just so impressed with how much fun this is and how creative everybody is. It's just a great vibe. But the reason I don't participate is because I have children and poor time management skills, so we got going. I actually had the kids make the cookies after I realized that I should have made the dough maybe yesterday because it was supposed to um, sit overnight. Janet is a baker and she knows how to bake it. She's like, oh yeah, I made my dough two days ago. Well, we managed to get one, one gingerbread mousse out of the whole thing. And, um, and then we bought some muffins to go with it and just kind of put it together. And this is the book, If You Get, Give a Moose a Muffin, which we read several of the series. Highly recommend them. They're lots of fun about consequences and one, one you know, no good deed goes unpunished kind of stuff. Um, and it's, it's great to be here. <laughs> they thinking about saying anything, but anyway, they were great bakers. It was fun to do it with them. <laughs> Great explanation. So we were intrigued by the fact that we have herbs, breakfast treats, and cookies all involved in this. And so we gave this the award of Breakfast, Dinner, and Dessert Award. And most literal. <laughs> and best mix of herbs and sweets. Sweet and savory. The Sweet and Savory Award. Nice. All right. Great job making that rosemary forest. That was something else. Nice one. All right. And now we're at Misty of Shinkatee. So I can't. All right. Well, um, Bonnie keeps saying that I say I don't bake. I do bake. My grandmother and my mother were fabulous bakers, and I love to bake. What I don't do is come up with good ideas or decorate or create or anything like that. So I baked the cake, the ginger cake, I baked the cookies, and my friend Claire decorated. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, well, I think it's a pretty straightforward decoration of a book that was our favorite when we were younger, and so we hope everybody enjoys that. We had fun with vanilla frosting and some chocolate frosting and colors and sugar and there's a little sprouts on there just to have something healthy as well. <laughs> oh, shit, I know now, now, now I've complicated things, haven't I? Why don't I come over here then? Uh, so uh, we were really struck by the energy of this. Like, it really, I really feel like I'm like splashing in the water with the ponies. Um, 
And we thought this was certainly the most equine of our, of our dessert. Uh, but we also uh, gave it the Wild Pony Playfulness Award and the cutest, frolickingest wild pony cookies that we have ever seen. I mean, really, the, the motion and energy in it is really quite, quite something. Although, I gotta tell you, I think I might take the sprouts off before I eat it. Sorry. You're a doctor. Uh, Ollie, Ollie, I'm giving my sprouts to you. Okay? All right. All right. And, and now we are uh, at Othello. Oh. Hello, everyone, and thanks for coming out again for a wonderful thanks. edible look. Yay, edible look! Woo! We have that chair once in a while. It's a great event, such a great event. So, yeah, um, came up with Othello this year, or I should say, my lovely wife just came up with Othello. And um, it's made out of uh, kicks and uh, lots of uh, marshmallows. Some chocolate, and um, I think that's so pretty much it. Explain, explain the pun. Oh sure, yeah. There's a bit of a pun you want to. Oh sure. Well, um, this isn't our first edible book, and we're kind of stuck on ideas this year. And I said, oh, why don't we do a fellow the game, but a fellow the play? So I don't know if you've read the play or if you've played the game, but uh, both are quite good, and I recommend them. <laughs> It's a good play on words, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here are your awards. Let's see. Most mellow with fellow awards. Um, we said how to turn Shakespeare into a game award. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Congratulations. <laughs> um, Alex. Loves the Penderwicks, which is a great children's book if anyone hasn't read it. Done by a local author too, and there's a bunch of them. It's a series. Um, and so he wanted us to make brownies like Rosalind, one of the characters in this, likes to make. So we did. And then we decorated them in the theme with many of the major characters in the Penderwicks in it, mostly good people. Um, the four Penderwick sisters, Batty, Jane, Skye, and Rosalind, and their father, Mr. Penderwick and their best friend, Jeffrey, and then their dog, Helms, their neighbor, Iantha, her son, Ben, um, one of the people who helps them in the first book, who's called the Tomato Man, and um, a cat that they met in the second book, which is, who's called Asimov. And then we did throw in two of the bad guys. One of the bad guys is a bull, um, who Batty has an altercation with in the first book, where she go, she's four years old and she wanders into a field and sees something that looks like a very interesting horse. So she says, hello, horsey, and it's not a horse, it's a bull. <laughs> and her, her friends have to rescue her, and they do. And then in the second book, there's a bad guy named Bugman, um, who wears shiny sunglasses that make his eyes look like a bug. So these are brownies. Alex and I put a lot of work into making the various frostings. Um, and discovered it's really hard to make pianos out of royal icing. That, that is not a signal that wow. <laughs> because Jeffrey is a musician. So. Awesome. Do you guys want to say anything? There are many other characters we did not include. Uh. Uh, well, I would just like to say these brownies look so delicious that I think you need to include all of the characters next time with more brownies, please. It's unacceptable. I'm just kidding. This is really a, a wonderful creation, and clearly a lot of work went into the making of the icing and the icing of the icing, the placing of the icing, whatever one does with icing. So um, with this award, the, our, our main award that we came up for this is the only thing better than brownies is brownies with frosting. And the only thing better than brownies with frosting is brownies with frosting about four sisters, two rabbits, and a very interesting boy. <laughs> and uh, they, it really, these really look incredibly delicious. I feel guilty eating them a little bit. Um, and I would also just like to say, I think we all have had that experience where we say hi to something that we think is a horse, but in fact it turns out to be a bull. I think that's a universal theme in life. So I can understand where that character's coming from. So thank you guys for that really awesome hard work. <laughs> And now we're gonna hear about playing with food. When, when I went to uh, John Riley's bookshop to give him some flyers for the event, oh, I saw this book and I was just inspired. I thought, how can, with a book playing with food, how can it 
play with your food, how can it not become an edible book? So um, I actually found the second book too. So this one is uh, the food, you really are supposed to play with it. And I hope the ki kids here or adults will, <laughs> will. I mean, it's interactive even more than the poem thing. So the idea is to use this and really play with it before you eat it. I want a mess. Inside the tray. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to make a great food fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. So first of all, Dee, I have to say, when I looked at this, I said, gross. <laughs> Yeah, make that, I, I second that emotion. <laughs> Just the marshmallows next to the ketchup? <laughs> I don't know. So, one of the awards we gave it is most upsetting to people who don't like their food to touch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, and church supper all rolled into one hour. Because you got your mashed potatoes, your ice cream cones, your marshmallows, and your spaghetti. But I, I think that it's a great idea to, um, would one of you be willing to like initiate yeah. playing with the food? Can we have a volunteer? Right now. Whoa, maybe roll Go up your sleeves it. there, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to take off my coat. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. Take your time. Here, I'll, I'll hold on to this for you, and I'll hold on to your coat. I'll be your trusted you assistant here. Do you, do, you need, do you need parental consent for this, by any chance? Or? <laughs> it's really hard to when you've got like a thousand rubber bands. That's, a, that's a fair, you never know when you're going to need one. Don't use your though. hands because people might eat it later. So oh, is that? Oh, it's more for this is the way to show Oh, I was thinking hands. <laughs> that's okay, you can use the shovel. Someone's going to eat that later? Anyone going to eat this? Cold spaghetti is It's Dee's dinner, yeah, and breakfast. You can stir it, you know, that's sort of tender Oh, ouch! Any grosser than it already was, but there we go. Spaghetti and chocolate sauce. Oh, that's the best. All right. Excellent. So now we're going to move on to Deepak Michal. Is Deepak Michal here with Play With Your Food? I don't think he's here. You may want to go to We'll move to the next one. He might be here a little bit later. So we're going to move on to the next one. Deepak Michal. I keep doing that. Good job, man. All right, let's see here. Don't let me trip anyone. I don't know how we're doing. So we're coming over here to uh, in Flanders Field. Okay, so so Wendy's not here, but we'll, we'll talk about her awesome creation. Oh, please. Here we go. So in Flanders Field, uh, this is a really beautiful recreation of the of, of the cover of the book. Um, we gave it the most exact recreation. And the poppiest recreation, if you take a look at these flowers, they're really very delicate and, and beautifully done. And, and we gave it the Sadness Made Edible Award. <laughs> I, sort of, I sort of gave it the little, the, like, the little uh, tagline of, I didn't know I could be hungry in a graveyard, but this certainly makes me feel that way. Um, so anyway, it's a really beautiful, uh, beautiful work here. Uh, oh, hang on, we're, we've got uh, Deepak Mikhail is back here with us, so we're going to do it over here. Deepak <laughs> Mikhail, thank you for joining us. I don't recognize you. I don't think I've ever seen you around here before. So. Well, I, I'm just passing through on my way from India. And uh, I just wanted to say that my play with food is much better than that other messy one. Here the idea is we have a nice little sandbox and it's more conceptual and people if you were little enough, you could play with a focaccia-encrusted sandbox with graham cracker sand. <laughs> and these are real candies. You can eat them. They're very yummy and not disgusting like that <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's amazing that the two of them were done by two completely different people, but basically on the same theme. I've never really seen that ever before in this uh, edible book contest. So we gave this the award of sand we'd like to see at the beach, and we also added the did a cat pee in that award. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, a cat peed, and we know they'll pee just about anywhere, and it is sand, so. I'm just saying, I'm just a messenger. All right, we'll move on over here to Wizard of Oz then. Hi, my name is Dee. This is my daughter Louisa. 
And the idea for this was totally... Your date? Well, maybe you made that other one. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think a Deepak thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so this was kind of up our alley because we like food and Louisa is a big reader. She read 150 books last year. Oh. She counted them. And she usually has three or four of them going on at the same time. So I was kind of surprised that she knew that she wanted to do The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> So, and um, I helped with the buying of the ingredients, a couple <laughs> ideas, but really Louisa did the entire thing by herself. Wow. So we had a couple of structural issues, you know, the Emerald City, that, uh, <laughs> you know, what to do with Dorothy's basket. We couldn't quite find a handle for Toto in the little, you know, <laughs> Reese's Peanut Butter Cup thing. And of course, my biggest addition to it was the, the broccoli. Broccoli, <laughs> uh, broccoli and sprouts. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say, Lisa? No? It's Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Well, we were struck by how incredibly colorful and beautiful and joyful this one was. So we gave it the award of So Super Joyful I Want to Skip Award. <laughs> and I just have to say that I'm very impressed that not only Lisa do you read, but you also are an incredible baker. And designer. And designer. Yeah, the, the textures on that are really phenomenal. I mean, not that I touched it, I don't want you to think that, but it really, really has a lot of cool texture on that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So thank you guys for this that. This is our first time. time. Awesome. Don't let it be your last then. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So I think, are we, right, we've, we've made full circle. I think everyone deserves a really big round of applause. <laughs> also, thank you to the organizers. I have to say, I know it's a lot of work, but it's really cool. I've never lived any place else in my life where we bring two cool things, well, three cool things together, right? Food books and people, I think you really can't get any better than that, so thank you.